We speak now 16 days of, act, of activism. So as a signatory of the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or CEDAW, uh, South Africa has an obligation to make sure women and children are protected. That's according to the Women's Legal uh, Center, who in 2013, along with uh, partner organizations, approached the CEDAW committee, requesting it investigate the alarming rates of domestic violence in South Africa. The investigation, which took place in 2019, found that South Africa was in grave violation of the rights uh, of rights under the CEDAW Convention. To tell us more about what they found and what steps they're going to take next, we're joined uh, via teams by Advocate Bronwyn Pithy, who is a uh, uh, lead on the Violence Against Women program at the Women's Legal Center. We're also joined by candidate attorney Andrea jo uh, Joy uh, Yankees from the Violence Against Women program at the Women's Legal Center. Ladies, a good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Advocate uh, Pithy, I want to start with you and and talk a little bit about just the significance of South Africa being a signatory um, to some of the, the, I suppose one would call it the limitations of CEDAW on how a country needs to be dealing with gender-based violence and how badly we have failed, if, if the view is that we have. Good morning and thank you very much for having the Women's Legal Centre on the programme. Yeah, so look, it's been a long process um, and, and, and what I think the important aspect to, to highlight is that South Africa is both a signatory and has ratified the CEDAW Convention, which means that the government has committed itself to the various articles of the Convention mm. and various articles directly address violence against women, including um, gender, all forms of gender-based violence and domestic violence. And as you rightly said, um, civil society put forward a request to the CEDAW committee uh, quite a number of years ago, 10 years ago, for them to investigate the very dire state of domestic violence in the country. And as you say, a, a report has come out from the CEDAW committee uh, highlighting these very grave violations. And, and really what it, what it amounts to is the non-implementation of many of the laws and policies that we do have in place. We're one of the few countries in the world who actually do have very good legislation in place, but we are failing constantly in terms of actually enforcing that legislation and making sure that women have access to justice and enjoy that protection from the law. Yeah, uh, you, part of the thing I suppose about the importance of a discussion like this is even to educate whether it be women, men, children, everyone really about what some of those laws are and I'm going to bring you in here um, Andrea and say you know talk to us a little bit about what some of those laws are that we've done really well at legislating um, but very yeah. poorly at implementing and, and protecting women's rights. Yeah, um, so just last week, the Women's Legal Center actually facilitated, um, last week and the week before, facilitated on the domestic violence amendments mm. and gender-based violence and the law to first responders and communities and women on the ground. And actually what we really found is that although these laws are beautifully, are beautifully structured in law, mm. Um, it's not implemented on the ground and women come back and say, well, I've applied for a protection order, but when I actually try and seek justice, um, just I'm not receiving justice. So, yeah. yeah. That's, if we, that's yeah, you know, if we if we if we just look at the picture that we actually are putting forward to the world in terms of how we're actually going about protecting women's um, lives, I, I go back to now the document coming from uh, coming from um, the Women's Legal Center itself. And it reads here, during 2022, during the 16 days of activism campaign, yeah. 1,101 women were murdered yeah. and close to 6,000 were raped. That's during the campaign for 16 days of activism. Yeah. So one can only imagine then, Bronwyn, what those numbers look like and then what how, how they compare with prosecution levels when we start looking at from an annual point of view or year to year. And I think that you hit the, you've hit the nail on the head. That's exactly the problem, is that we have a, a constant message coming from government, which um, we, we support for women to come forward and seek justice. But where we're failing them then is to actually provide that justice. So you're absolutely right. The numbers are staggering. And, and, and I actually think we all get a little, you know, excuse the, the kind of parallel punch drunk, Mm. around the fact that we just hear all of these numbers all the time and we start yeah. getting a little immune to them. But the numbers are unacceptable. Um, you know, we're, we actually are suffering the, the levels of violence against women in this country equivalent to a nation which is actively at war. 
You know, th those are the kind of numbers that we that, that, that we're experiencing in this country. And, you know, if we are encouraging women to come forward and seek justice, we then have to implement it. And the very sad thing, as you've pointed out, is what we call attrition. So oh. we have so many women who are reporting, whether it's domestic violence or sexual violence, and they're not getting justice and they're falling out of the system. And very often they're blamed. But the reason they withdraw their matters is because things take so long. There's no support. Um, very often they have to take days off work in order to attend um, courts and then matters are postponed. So we really unfortunately have a pretty dysfunctional criminal justice system and civil justice system that has been meant to be protecting women and is just not providing that kind of framework where women are, are, are actively feeling protected. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking again at the findings that you've sent there coming out of the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So this is the international body assessing how South Africa deals with gender-based violence. And it says uh, the committee findings during your three-day visit found that uh, South Africa has a failure to criminalize domestic violence and femicide, enforce remedies, repeal harmful uh, provisions, uh, provisions and prosecute offenders. I think that's a difficult thing to wrap our heads around because, well, femicide is murder. So, I mean, what is the distinction that we're looking for here, uh, Andrea? Um, Andrea? Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Bronwyn, did you hear the question? Yeah, I, I did hear it. Sorry, I, sure, I mean, Andrea seems to have fallen off slightly. Look, the, the, the fact of the matter is that there are women and, and men killed every day in South Africa. And, and, and femicide is a very particular type of killing of women based on, specifically based on the fact that it has a gendered nature to it. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the failure of the states to actively address the particular type of, 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 of the murder of women in the context of intimate partner violence um, really needs to be recognized um, and specifically criminalized. At the moment, obviously, it, it is criminalized in terms of our criminal law and the murder. And I know that the government certainly is putting various programs in place um, and an ability to try and count those numbers tend to, re to get a realistic um, picture. But the reality is that most of us know the, the most gruesome murders are being, you know, are, are in the media, but every single day women are losing their lives in intimate partner violence. Yeah, what are, what are the stats, uh, and I'll, Andrea, I'm hoping the line is back there with you. What are the stats on our prosecution levels? So, I mean, we know that already we have a challenge where women simply aren't, aren't you know, are afraid to report um, when they, they, they have been victims of gender-based violence. But what are the stats when it comes to prosecution, Andrea? I think we've still lost Andrea, unfortunately. Okay, I'm Brandon, you continue. Yeah, again. Sure. That's, that's absolutely fine. I'm sorry about that. Um, look, when we're talking about sexual violence, we are talking realistically about a prosecution a conviction rate of about five, between five and six percent of the numbers that are actually reported to the police. Now, statistics can be reported in various ways. Um, the police and the prosecution choose to uh, report on matters that um, result in arrests and then the prosecution report on conviction rates in relation to the number of cases that they actually take forward to prosecution and are then heard in court and trial or are um, um, guilty pleas are, are negotiated. So we ha really do have a very, very low conviction rate in comparison to the number of cases that are reported every year and that's yeah. what we call attrition. And again, the reasons are, are really not very positive around why it is that so many women are not finding the justice at the end of the day in terms of the prosecution of sexual offences in particular. Mm. But it, it's, it's, it's as true, to, unfortunately, for domestic violence matters um, in the criminal aspect of that, you know, in terms of its matters of um, assault or assault GBH or attempted, to attempted murder. Very often those matters are not taken forward either for various reasons. Yeah. And, and, and we need a, we definitely need a, a far stronger position from 
the authorities um, to take these matters forward and ensure that we actually do bring perpetrators to justice. Yeah, I mean, you've, you, you've said a mouthful there when you say prosecution levels are sitting at, what, 4 to 5 percent. I mean, I, I almost want to emphasize that because essentially what it means is for every woman who was brave enough to report an incident of gender-based violence, for every 100 women who are brave enough to report an incident of gender-based violence, only four will get justice out of the hundred that are brave enough to actually step forward and approach authorities. Bronwyn, I'm going to stay with you until I have certainty that we have Andrea back. Um, but I know that the Women's Legal Centre says you want to hold government accountable. What is that going to look like? Well, really what we're saying is that, first of all, we're a little disappointed, um, to be honest, that the results of the CEDAW committee um, of that inquiry have not been made very well known publicly. Mm. Um, we were involved in the process and to have an international um, organization in the form of the United Nations and an international convention and the committee attached to that convention having these findings. And unfortunately, as far as I can see, there has been very little publicity and acknowledgement on the part of government of these findings. The government has responded, um, uh, and, and one must give credit to that in terms of they have responded back to the CEDAW committee. Yeah. And um, they have emphasized a lot of the legislation that has been put in place. But I think we're missing the point. The, the issue is our issue around accountability is that we have got to see implementation in practice. Mm. Um, you know, we're lawyers and we can only do so much mm. and we can make sure that the law is good. But what we need to keep doing as, as, as a collective, whether it's community based organizations, NGOs, legal organizations like us, everyday people need to insist that the police and the prosecution are doing what they're meant to be doing because until we have that accountability our laws are not with anything other than the, the pieces of paper they're written on sure. i'm hoping andrea joy is back with I, us I, by now. I i think she is and, and so i'm going to let you have the last shot here andrea and talk to us about you know the recommendations that um you guys have put forward and have been forward put forward also by the committee and then just to just as you as you close off with that thought maybe also talk to us about whether or not what we're seeing taking place now the third um, african union men's conference in Pretoria on positive masculinity as an encouraging step in the right direction, Andrew? Yeah, so we... Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, Andrea. Can you? No, I can't hear anything. Andrea, can you, you go ahead and speak. Can speak. you? We can hear you. Okay, oh, Brahman. Yeah. Okay, we seem to be yeah. having. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give this one again. to you. You go ahead, Brahman. We, we seem to have a, a problem. Look, the recommendations that have been put forward by the by the committee are supported by the Women's Legal Centre broadly, and it really does involve uh, really addressing preventative issues, addressing the causes of domestic violence, and the causes that give rise to this, criminalising all forms of domestic violence, and, and really to a large extent. Um, capacitating and training of service providers, so police, prosecutors, and holding them accountability accountable, having accountability mechanisms. Yeah. And then getting to your second point in terms of the uh, program that was, or the the, the 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 summit that is now being that is now being held at in the Victoria. moment. Mm. There is there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that men have to be a part of the solution. Um, but we must be careful of the language we use. You know, when we talk about men must protect women, the, the immediate question is, well, protect them from who? It's not mm. like, well, unfortunately, in some places they are in the world, but mo we, you know, we're no longer in a situation where we need to be prevented or, or protected from wild animals. Um, I, the unfortunate thing is what we need to be protected against is men. So it, 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 it really does revolve around men taking responsibility for themselves and for each other. Men have to stand up to other men. You know, it's very difficult for women to stand up to, to, to men for very obvious reasons. And men need to step in. Men need to have the courage to see it, to call it out and to call out their brothers, to call out their fathers, to call out their friends and say, this behavior is unacceptable. Yeah.
Well, Brownwin, thank you so much for your time. Despite the many technical gremlins that we've had in that discussion, Sorry we pushed through. This. No, no, no. All of these things cannot be controlled sometimes. Thank you so much for your time. Advocate Bronwyn Pithy, uh, who is the lead on the Violence Against uh, Women program at the Women's Legal Center, and candidate attorney Andrea Joy Yankees from the Violence Against Women program at the Women's Legal Center. An important discussion there.